Hey y'all, I'm Shayna and I'm back with another review. This is for Ready to Love's Make a Move Season 1, Episode 2, Wake Up Call. And let's go ahead and get into it. I thought this episode was really good. Honey, I didn't think we would get into the mess till later, but we get into it now. So let's talk about it. <laughs> if you're new here, if you're not, either way, welcome. Thank you for checking out the video. If you enjoy, check out my other content. Be sure to like the video and subscribe. It's a growing channel. I need your help to make it grow. And I definitely appreciate you for stopping by. So, okay. The ladies are going on their dates that Tamika picked. It seems like every episode we might have something a little different. So I do like that about this uh, particular show. Um, all the ladies are satisfied with their initial dates that she that Tamika has picked for them. So we start off with Zadia. Zadia's date is Cameron, 36, a pharmacist. Honey, he said he's a doctor, okay? Uh, Zadia going to switch up her wigs and make him feel like he's cheating if she don't do nothing else, okay? So Zadia is in her confessional, and she said she's been celibate since June 2022. And I thought, what did this have to do with anything? Like, who asked her that? <laughs> what did that have to do? Honey, hi, my name is Zadia. <laughs> And then we start talking about celibacy. How do we get here? Anywho, Cameron uh, said he's also a photographer, so he stays busy and he talks about entrepreneurship. Zadia says she owns her own personal training company and she's a, moi, a makeup artist on the side as well. So she knows all about the hustle and bustle of entrepreneurship. He seems to like that. Um, but I'm thinking with all this hard work, how will they find time for each other if they're dating because they seem to be very busy. Um, but overall, they're the same age and seem to be a really good fit. I thought they were pretty compatible and, you know, aesthetically pleasing, had things in common. You know, they both went to school in Atlanta. They both went to college in Houston at some point. So, so far, so good. Moving on, we got Ashley and... I need uh, my, my good sis to have better picks. I'm going to be honest. She's going on a bike riding date with Marcus, 41. He's an assistant principal. Ashley is so cool. Like, she just go with the flow. Baby, listen, don't take me bike riding on no first, not no first date. Like, we got to be dating for a little while before we start doing this type of adventurous activity, okay? I guess that's why I don't got no man. Because I don't want to go bike riding on the first date. I want to get dressed up and I don't want to be putting on no active wear. I want to you know, put on makeup, look cute, smell good, honey. I want to sit down at the table and eat and get to know you. We can save all this adventure for later. But um, they stop to get ice cream or something. <laughs> and actually asks his first impression of her. Well, his first impression was probably that she don't remember how to ride no bike, but <laughs> that's neither here nor there. He was like, yeah, you look real good in that yellow goldish. And she was like, Skrr, pump the brakes. I didn't have on yellow nor gold. I had on a tan dress. So she was like, Zadia is the one I had on yellow. And they was sitting shoulder to shoulder too. He got her confused with Zadia. Ashley is not impressed. And neither am I. Now, he claimed he can recover. We'll see. So Ashley asked him to tell her something about himself. He shares that he's an assistant principal at a high school. Anything else? <laughs> okay. Ashley says she's a serial entrepreneur. She was a speech therapist. She did grades from pre-K all the way up to high school. So she knows about working with the children. Um, shout out to everybody who, who works with the youth. That is not an easy job. I, I couldn't do it. Okay. And I got kids. And she's the overall jack of all trades. Ashley says she enjoyed her date. Well, I didn't. I was underwhelmed and turned off and I wasn't even there. <laughs> but it ain't about me. Okay. Uh, he doesn't seem like a good fit. He just don't. And I feel like if he was talking about Zadia, I don't know if he was all that into her like he should be. I want to know who the men would pick. Like, bring them in on, and I want to see, like, who they would go after. Or they need to get, like, the little um, things, like some flashcards or some, something, hold up the thing and pick and write down who their pick would be so they could, so we would know who they would actually pick. Maybe they will have that going on because, you know, like I said, they switch, seem to switch it up every episode. So we'll find out as the season goes on. 
Up next is Renisha's date. She's with Ramon, 38, a former pro basketball player. He mostly played overseas, so he's well-traveled. And they talk about him, where he's traveled to, and where he's played quite a bit. That's cool and everything. But what does he do for a living right now? Like, where are you working at now? Now that you uh, retire from basketball, do you have a nine to five? Do you have enough savings to keep it afloat? Because baby, I don't care what they're telling you. I feel like we in a recession. <laughs> y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments. So Vern asked how long it's been since he since his last relationship. And he was going all around the bush up the street, you know, giving a long-winded answer. And she like, how long has it been? He like, I'm getting there. Ooh. Because <laughs> he didn't want to say that he ain't been in a relationship since 2008. Child, please. Uh, and she was like, well, how long was that relationship? It was only for two years. He was 21. So Renisha automatically thinking like, that's a concern. He's inexperienced when it comes to commitment. And he is. And you ain't about to be trying to figure it out on me, honey. No, I I'm not trying to be your lesson. <laughs> uh-uh. But um, I wonder, because she didn't really talk about it. Like, with him being so inexperienced, I feel like he probably wants kids. I don't know. And nobody asks. And I don't know if Renisha wants more because her her daughters are older. But um, Jabari, who she went out with last week, is definitely a better fit for her, in my opinion. At least as of right now. So we, we go on to Sharice. Um, and she's very attractive to her date. He's wearing a nice suit. And we know that's what she likes. She had her eyes on him when he walked through the door. She said, oh, that must be for me. Cause y'all know I love a man in a suit. So we have Maurice. He's 51, an attorney, and he owns his own practice. Okay. So he got the coinage. Okay. Perfect. Maurice said that, uh, he, she's like, what do you like to do? He likes to go out for dinner. He likes to travel. He likes, he calls himself a social butterfly. That's what he say, but he wasn't socializing much on this date, if you ask me. Sharice does like that, though, and so do I. I do not want to be with somebody who just don't want to do nothing. Oof, I've been there, done that for the birds. <laughs> but um, I don't know. I don't know if he's really that interested in her. So he gets flowers delivered to her. And nice touch, honey. He ain't new to this, okay? <laughs> he know how to be romantic, honey. He, he's done this before. So Sharice had to ask him if he wants to know anything about her. I really don't like that because he was like, well, what, do you, what would you like to share? To me, I'm going to tell you I don't like that. I don't like that because I feel like if I had to ask you, like, do you want to know anything about me? You're not interested in me. If you're interested, naturally, you would just ask something about me. I shouldn't have to tell you to ask about me. <laughs> like the men are there to get to know the women. I, ugh, child, anyway. So Cherie shares that she's 44, never been married, and no children. Maurice was previously married and has four children, but his youngest just turned 21. Now, Cherise claims she wants children. I don't know if I quite believe her, but and she was she always says, like, I want somebody who doesn't have any. Cherise, you are 44. <laughs> Girl, be for real. Yeah, there's a chance, but the chance is slim. If you're going to be on a process like this, you got to be open. If you're not going to be open, then don't be on a process like this. You know the men in the age range that you're looking for? She wants the man older than her, child-free, and wants to have kids? Very slim. But, you know, she's not she's not turning him away. Um, Yeah, I don't know if he would want to start completely over. And, again, no one asked. Because <laughs> if you want children, if I got a 21-year-old and that's my youngest, you couldn't pay me. Child, please. Um, I wonder, well, I wonder why he got divorced. We didn't really get into it, and they weren't talking about nothing else, so we could have gotten into it. So the food comes, and the conversation is lacking, almost non-existent. The conversation's one-sided. He's not asking her anything. And when she asks him questions, he's responding, but it's not open-ended. Because she's like, do you work out? And he's like, yeah, of course. No follow-up. No, do you? Or what kind of workouts do you like to do? I like Pilates. Well, I like, you know, cardio. Nothing. She's just asking all the questions. And again, I don't really think these women are all that interested. I feel like they just want to be on TV, honey. So the ladies meet with Tamika, and Tamika asks about house rules. And I'm like, why did this come up? Something must have happened. So Sharice mentions not having guys in the house ever. Mm. I can tell she ain't ever had no roommate. <laughs> Neither have I. So I, I, I don't know how I would feel about that. 
Um, so we get a little story time and apparently the night before the ladies are drinking, they were having fun and Zadia asked how they feel about guys coming over. So Ashley and Vern were like, girl, we don't care. You grown, do what you want to do. You know, as long as they stay out of my way. Okay. Sharice obviously shut it down since she, we know she has an issue with it. So the next morning, Zadia said the door was locked. She was trying to get back in the house. Sharice said that Zadia rudely called her phone and was like, open the door. Didn't ask and say, sorry for waking you up. Nothing. I guess she said, like, I ain't have no guy in the house. I left the house. <laughs> so I respected your boundaries. I wonder why she called Sharice and not Ashley. Or did Ashley just not answer the phone? Because her and Ashley seem cool. And Ashley don't seem like she, you know, like anything really bothers her. I wouldn't call Sharice. So Tamika asked, who wasn't in her room last night? Ash and Vern was like, uh, they were in their rooms. Zadia fake calls, and she was like, and I, I was too. <laughs> I was also in my room, but I went for, a, she was like, I went for a walk. And Tamika was like, why didn't you just say that before? She was like, when did you go for the walk? And she was like, mm, around 6. And she was like, 6 p.m. or 6 a.m. I need to know. And it's just like, Zadia, you obviously in my opinion, allegedly telling tall tales. <laughs> but um, Ashley, in so many words in her confessional, said that Zadia was lying, that that's what I gathered from that. That's my opinion. And uh, girl, Zadia, you grown. Do what you want to do. But make sure before you sneak out that you leave the door unlocked. Huh? <laughs> so the mean girls are getting into it, honey. Can't say I didn't see this coming. The two mean girls of their season getting into it. What a shock. <laughs> um, so anyway, they have to pick which man they want to keep dating tonight. It's happening right tonight. Like, you don't got much time. You here for a good time. Not a long time. We don't got time to waste. So all of the ladies, um, their dates arrive to the house. Jabari immediately grabs Vernicia. So we already know where his head is at. So Vern and Jabari shared that they both have daughters that are a part of the LGBTQ plus community. And if I left out a letter or a number, let me know, please. <laughs> um, so they have, even every time they turn around, they got something else in common, like too good to be true. But I don't like, now the first episode, you know, I was letting it go. Renisha keeps saying like, oh, should I do this like before? I'm doing that like before, like. Okay, now I'm feeling like Tamika a little bit like leave before, before the past is in the past is over with. So uh, Ashley tells her first date, Donald, to um he she was like spit some poetry for me. You said you write poetry. Let me hear some. So he does, and she's like, "You wrote that for another girl." And he's like, "But I'm performing it for you." Corny, boo, tomatoes, tomatoes. Don't be telling me no, no poetry that you didn't write for me. I would have rather him say, like, listen, I want to write something specifically for you, and I'm going to give it to you at the right time or something. Not that. Don't, don't, don't tell me something you told somebody else. Ultimately, Ashley kicked the assistant principal to the curb and, stick, and stuck with Donald. I think Donald, I, it's something about him in my spirit. I feel like he's not genuine. That's just, you know, what I'm picking up. So Sharice has a little chit chat with Zadia's date, Cameron, and says, I think you're the reason that I got woken up this morning. And Cameron just oblivious, but he admits that him and Zadia were talking till sunrise. She called him, he picked her up, and they was just talking all night. Um, I believe that they were talking all night, but I don't know. When Zadia was lying and stuff, it looked sneaky and suspicious. I knew Sharice was going to do this. I knew she was going to go and ask that man. And I just kind of wish she didn't. Like, I wish she just, you already know that Zadia was telling stories, or at least you think you know. So why do you need him to confirm? Like, just leave it there. Like, she's dragging it. Zadia pulls Cameron because she's uncomfortable with him talking to Sharice. And it's also time for her to let someone go. So she asks Cameron about past relationships. He refuses to discuss it. He like, you don't need to know about my past. Uh, the way he was like, no, like shutting it down completely. Like, why are we just so like no nonsense when it comes to that? Like no flexibility. Your past relationships and things you've gone through help shape who you are today. So it's nice to know something about your past. Why is it a secret? <laughs> 
Um, but Zadia ultimately lets Jabari go because his connection is with Renisha. So yeah, she gonna stick with Cameron. Sharice picks Maurice like we knew she would. Um, Renisha picks Jabari. And <laughs> she was talking to um, the tall guy, uh, Ramon. And she was like, oh, you know, I'm going to go another direction. And she was like, how you feel? He's like, I'm kind of sad, but you know. She's like, okay, well, let me walk you out. <laughs> so later that night, the ladies are cooking. And Sharice brings up Cameron, clearly to get up, up under uh, Zadia's skin. And then house rules come up again. The mean girls start getting into it. They start tongue tussling, child. And Sharice even calls Zadia a mean girl, like the audacity. And Zadia was like, you don't know nothing about no sisterhood. You don't know how to be a sister because you would have came to me directly instead of doing what you're doing. I do feel like, because when Zadia came down, she's like, oh, what y'all talking about? And they was just talking. And I felt like Sharice was just poking the bear. And she's like, don't wake me up. Don't call me to, to wake me up no more. You've already said that, Sharice. Like, you're dragging it now. Like, and she's like, I don't feel comfortable. And I feel like I could go home. I'm like, girl, well, okay, we'll go then. Bye. <laughs> I was Zadia, like, okay, I don't care. Okay, see you. And Zadia was like, I asked you last night, do you have a problem with guys coming to the house? You said you did. I respected it. Like, you don't want to be called. Like, you don't want to be talked to. Okay, fine. So, I don't know. Who side y'all on with this? I can see both sides. I just... Don't drag this on all season, though. Like, it was cool this week. Maybe next week. But don't drag it on all season long. Okay? But overall, I am enjoying uh, the season so far. We're only two episodes in, but I do like it. Let me know what y'all think in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.